welcome to the channel. I am Corvette Hop. For those of you that are part of the channel, we now have almost 2 million views. That would not be possible without each and every one of you. Today, we're going to look at the build of the Corvette Hop Garage Workshop from start to finish. With that, let's go ahead and get started and hey, keep those cars on the road. This is an overhead view of the shop after it was finished and of course one with the car in it. Now this is a little bit of the video of the garage once it's completed and I think it turned out absolutely amazing. During this video I'm going to show you some photos and video of the process. That of course didn't happen by accident. It took a lot of time and a lot of hard work. My hope is that you learn something from this video and can apply it to your own workshop or garage. Now I did learn a couple tricks in applying the sheetrock and the flooring in which I'll show you in this video so play close attention. During the build of photos and video I'll fast forward it for your convenience. Of course you could pause it and slow it up anytime you like. Every garage or building has a starting point and this workshop is no exception. I started with a 26 by 50 slab. That is 26 foot wide, 50 foot in length. Now of the 50 foot length, 20 foot of it is going to be outside overhang. That of course is so I can work outside out of the Texas heat. During the build I put the two Corvettes under the overhang just to get a sense of how much room I would have. Plus I was very happy progress was being made. And now I'll go ahead and speed up the video a little bit. Please slow down or pause if needed at any point. Now I was very excited to get the wood framing up on the interior. The quicker I got that up, the quicker I can get the sheetrock and the plywood up. However, before the sheetrock and plywood went up, I had to install all the wiring. That included all the 110 outlets and 220 outlets. Here I'm installing an outlet for the lights. I put the circuit breaker panel to the front of the garage, that way I could use maximum use of the walls. It also allowed less wiring to the power source, which is the house, of course. Now this garage has a total of 12 110 outlets and two 220 outlets on the back wall. Hey, I figured why not? Too many outlets can never be enough. I decided to install four foot LED lights in the building. In fact, these are the LED lights right here. I have an air compressor plugged into one of those 220 outlets. This is a 26 by 30 facility. Now let's go ahead and take a little helicopter view of the workshop. So you can be a lot of aircraft in the air today. Your craft approaching on the right. Love that double door in the four windows of the workshop. Watch that. Let's land this thing and get back to work. Now I know a lot of people get in debate whether to apply sheetrock or plywood on the walls of their workshop. I decided that I'm going to apply a combination of both. I installed sheetrock on the side because I already knew standing along floor mounted shelving units were going to be applied and OSB board on the back wall. Now you may ask how in the world did I cut out the perfect squares for the outlets and the switches all around the shop. I'm going to show you that here in just a second. My friend Keith came down to help me out with hanging the sheetrock and the plywood and he did an amazing job. Keith simply outlined the boxes for the outlets with chalk. Now Keith made sure he applied a very heavy coat of chalk on the outer perimeters of the outlet box. Now this method is a very cool nugget to take away as something learned. In this case we had two outlet boxes that we had to cut out on the OSB board. Once all the outside perimeter is covered with chalk we can now move on to the next step. Now Keith and I simply take the OSB board that we had cut out, set it up against the wall, and press on it against the two outlets that we put chalk on. That will make a chalk outline on the back side of the board and show us exactly where we need to cut out. Next we simply take an unused outlet box and make a perfect outline where we had the chalk marks. The reason we did this because you can clearly see the permanent marker much better when using the jigsaw. Keith made some perfect lines in this case. Next Keith will go ahead and drill some holes in so we can get the jigsaw in to cut the board. And now Keith puts that jigsaw into use.
One down and one more to go on this board. And it just drops out. There we go. And now the real test. Let's see how it fits. And that, my friends, is a perfect fit. And now we can just screw it into the 2x4 frame. Next, I had to put sheetrock tape and sheetrock mud around these seams so that I can cover them up and then lots of sanding. Once the sanding was complete, it was time to paint the workshop and install the trim. We decided to paint the workshop a Vospar paint color 4006-1C Drizzling Mist Gray is the color. Now I decided to do all the paint and trim before I installed the floor matting so that I wouldn't get any paint on the floor matting. This meant that when I installed the bottom wall trim, I had to leave enough room for the floor matting to fit under it. Now this workshop is taking place, I can get to working on the floors. I got the floor matting from GarageFlooringInc.com. I ordered the matting in red, black, and gray colors. Of course, the goal was to give it that race car look. Now the matting took a long time up to apply because I wanted to get it exactly right. I decided not to glue it down and let it just free stand on the floor. I will go ahead and fast forward the video and please pause whenever you feel like you need to look at it. At the end of this, I'll have another good nugget on how to do the trim for the matting against the walls. Now I'll go ahead and show you the trick that I used so that I got the perfect measurement for the edges around the floor. I align a piece of black matting exactly square with the red matting below it. Make sure it's precisely aligned. Again. Next, I get another sheet of matting and place it squarely against the wall, resting on the matting that I just installed on top of the red matting. The edge on the right side of this matting is where I'm going to cut. There we go. Make sure all these line up right here and then cut away. Make sure you're extra careful when using a razor blade. The bottom half of the matting that I just cut, I can use on the other side of the garage. And there we go, a perfect fit. Now on to the next piece. And this, of course, is how everything looks once complete. I hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, the wall colors are Vaspar Drizzling Mist Gray. The floor matting is from garageflooring.com. The floor tiles are from a CoinFlex Nitro type towel at $3.69 a square foot. The trim around the windows came out really, really nice. Plenty of wall outlets, again, 220 and 110. Enough lights to light up a stadium. I decided on a double door format at the back side of the garage for large equipment, in case I wanted to bring it in from the yard. Also, it was wise to have a door in the back for emergency purposes. Please go ahead and leave some comments and let me know what you think of the Corvette Hop Workshop Garage. Now I'm just loving this new workshop view. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you want to be part of the channel, then please go ahead and subscribe right here. With that, keep those cars on the road.